Space is Sims, and we're back with more Café Enchanté, and we were just having a battle between the Demon Kings, one being fake Demon King and one being the real Demon King, and apparently Miser is the fake Demon King. Well, there you go. Who cares? We don't care. We love him anyway. But there's going to be some kind of uh, weirdness to his story. It's funny, though, because we figured this out, and we're not even to Chapter 3 yet, and we still have, like, I mean, I think there's six chapters in his route, so, like, shit. Um. Anyway. Uh, so this is maybe in the, at toward the end of the battle. Uh, we blew Asmodeus away. I'm sorry, Miser did, and now we're dot dot dotting. So we just ran way over time. So I looked down on him as a joke, but if we fought in a bigger place, that might have taken a bit longer. Miser brushes off the dust stacked to his robes, and I quietly ask, "Did did you win?" Of course, it's a big win. That's good. As far as I can see, Miser has no major injuries. Oh, but, um, what about Asmodeus? Uh, I held back just to knock him out. To be honest, though, I wanted to punish him a little more. But I didn't want to do anything gruesome with you watching. This should suffice. We should hurry home. I'm sure everyone else is worried about you, too. Uh, also, to be honest, I don't have a lot of time. For some reason, Miser's face is a little pale. When he staggers for a moment... Splash. What? Suddenly a dull sound rings out. On the floor of the hall, a red puddle forms. Did Asmodeus stab my baby? And, falling onto it, the pocket watch from Miser's pocket. It shows twenty hundred and makes a small sound as it rolls. The red color spreads wider. What that represents? The answer is too clear. M Miser? Yeah. Before my eyes, from Miser's abdomen, I see a large amount of blood trickling down. Miser! My voice raises into a scream. <laughs> you decided you won, but abandoned the fight. You're naive. So naive. No, listen, you motherfucker. Leave me alone. Of course you're a false demon king. Asmodeus had emerged from the rubble, and his hand was pointed at Miser. <laughs> you're unexpectedly resilient. In that case, I just have to counterattack. Keeping to his word, Miser regains his stance and snaps his fingers on both hands. Countless explosions immediately burst out. But not on Asmodeus, on a wall a bit a bit of distance away from him. Huh? What? Miser's shocked that his magic missed and snaps his fingers to try again. But this time they're far from Asmodeus and go in completely different directions. I mean the poor man's been stabbed. Damn it. What's going on? I can't aim at all. As he says this, Miser falls to one knee, then coughs up an immense amount of blood. Miser's confused face, much like when he took that surprise attack, is going really pale. At first, Asmodeus was also surprised by his abnormal state, but... <laughs> I don't get it, but this is my chance! Don't you forget me? With a loud laugh, he fires an attack, and Miser guards it with a magic shield. From there, the situation quickly reverses. This makes me worried. <laughs> what is it? What's wrong, false demon king? As expected of a fake, is that the extent of your abilities? <laughs> With each second, Miser's face grows paler and he's forced to focus on defense. M Miser! I I'm fine, so I'll manage to turn this around. Before he can finish, a sound echoes in her ears. Huh? Well, is that just one of those fissures? Is it in the Demon King castle? As though interrupting the battle, the reverberating sound stops as Modi is cold. He kind of sounds more like Ignis the more he gets, like, angst, like, whatever. As for Miser... By fissure, you mean... The color of blood vanishes from his face. As though cutting in between the two of them... 
enormous fissure in space appears. Could this be... When I think this, as though answering... Okay, see, I thought he was going to be main antagonist, so I'm really curious. Huh. From the fissure in space, that young man drops into the demon world. Who are you? The young man's gentle face smiles at me, then... He shifts his gaze to Miser, who's surprised at his form. Then, with dry lips, he speaks. Who speaks? This would have been... Liar. Oh, that moment. <coughs> Not his wound, but Miser grabs his chest in agony. <coughs> he still has an hour. Oh, no. No! Stop, stop, stop! <coughs> Why? I still have one hour left. I thought... M Miser? The anguish on his face isn't even comparable to when he was injured. The more he struggles, the more it hurts. The drama music right now. Oh no. Uh, uh. The flashing in the background is scary. His body twists and creaks. As if something living inside him is trying to tear its way out of his body. Is he like a werewolf? <laughs> okay, Ignis had something living in him, so I can't be surprised. R what is this? What's happening? With this abnormality, Asmodeus completely stops his attacks and is obviously confused. I'm you and the rest of us, buddy. What's going on here? His gaze is fixed on the suffering miser, and his entire body begins to tremble. What? Even more than our battle does his agony now make my body tremble in fear of him. Asmodeus feels an unknown sense of fear, as though answering... I mean, he ain't trustworthy either. The young man faces Miser again and... Now, I couldn't read that, sorry. It's hard. Go ahead and show her your true form. Oh, God. Before my eyes, a storm of ash swirls. And this is why he can't stay overnight. The world. The demon world. Screams in desperate agony. What? Okay, this is gonna cockblock us. At the same time, at the place first visited with the wormhole to the human world, after not finding Spacey, all the regulars except Miser got go back together once again. Got back together once again, sorry. Nah, what's with this castle? It's so damn big, but there's not one enemy. Can't even force someone to tell us where she is. Hmm. Hopefully, Miser has managed to locate her on the upper floor somewhere. Huh? What is it, Shudden? You've been acting weird for a while. I know. I was just curious about, curious about a strange sound from both inside and outside the castle I've heard for a while. It is sound, if my memory serves me. It was the same one on Amasaki Island. Then, from the distance, from the direction that Miser headed to the upper levels, thunderous sounds of battle echo out. After this continues, shaking the whole castle. Uh, uh, an intense scream, enough to make anyone hearing it feel the pain, rings out. That voice just now, before the three open their mouths to say, the ground shakes so violently even they have difficulty remaining standing. With that shaking, a shockwave sent out by that scream. Canis, uh, Canis's instinct as a knight clearly tells him a warning to protect his allies from a coming threat. Ignis, ill, we must withdraw. Without waiting for an answer, Canis grabs Ignis and Ill by the arm and forces them to run at full speed. Then all of them together slip into the nearby wormhole. They just fucking left me? Rude. I mean, I get it, but... Rude! It's come. It's arrived. Its arm is reaching. The beginning of the end. Oh, weird. Of all worlds. Miser, what did you do? Uh, after Miser's scream and intense shaking, when the tremors have passed, I fearfully open my eyes and what jumps out is... 
nothing but a wasteland. What? In a single moment, I had moved to a different place. That's what I thought at first, but... I impossible! My demon world! My castle! A dumbfounded Asmodeus beside me tells me that my thought was wrong. In other words, in that moment... Our surroundings, including the castle, have been reduced to this wasteland. That's the most likely situation. So, like, Miser not coming back to where he's supposed to be just destroyed everything? Taking a closer look at my feet, the marble of the castle, or something close to it, remains in a circle. It's as though that sudden, mysterious calamity had spared us. But the scenery... It's similar to the world within. That mysterious man. I look around, but there's no sight of him. However, in his place... Beyond the raging storm of ash... Simply existing here. There's something that... The something that even ate away the world. Miser, oh my... It was present. Ways terrifying. Running through skin like hardened darkness, bulging veins and bone like muscle. Wow. With a sinister face and twisted horns, I mean, wow. He's like, I just, like... <laughs> <gasps> Something like remains of demon wings with only bones left sway in the wind. And you see all the little pieces like that's like his earring that he wears and like I mean you know it's it, but it's like terrifying. That entire body, whether human or non human, is a mass of overwhelming power that strikes fear into all. And he's like, I just didn't want anyone to hate me, man. I'm like a nice guy. Like <laughs> I guess we should have kind of maybe seen this coming from, like, Ignis's route, where, like, he turns into, like, actually a firewolf. You know what I mean? And goes rampaging, and we're like, I mean, I guess I should have, like, whatever. Who is that? Such strange form. Standing next to me, Asmodeus steps forward. It's kind of weird that we found this out this far, this soon in. Like, what the fuck is the rest of this route gonna be? Shielding me, he faces the figure that suddenly appeared. Thanks, I guess, but I still love the scary guy, because... I know what he's, what he's like inside. I love how they're like, question mark. Like, we don't know who you are. You poor terrifying thing. <laughs> like, Whatever. It doesn't matter who you are. All I know for sure about you is... You're the bastard harming the demon world. You deserve 10,000 deaths. I mean, he's standing like Miser too, which is so funny. The moment Asmodeus kicks the ground, it pulsates... Much like a volcanic explosion, dark flame surges toward the strange figure. So I'm gonna get yeah, you're hurting the demon world, because if you're not back by a certain time, you're destroying the world and the fissure, so it's all like... So you can't ever leave. But he does leave. Oh, that's kind of sad. I don't like this. <laughs> However, even seeing that hellfire, the strange figure doesn't move. If you ask why... Just before the flame hits him, it all turns to ash and crumbles away. The moment he recognizes this sight, Asmodeus' expression changes. Don't move, my bride. We need to retreat. Wait, you say retreat, but I don't want to go with... Uh, right now, friend or foe, bride or groom is the very least of your worries. The terror of that strange figure. You've witnessed it yourself. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure that's Miser, and I'm not afraid of him. If that strange ashen power is directed at you, there's no defending. Faster than Asmodeus can finish speaking, along with a dry wind blowing past, his right arm holding me, <laughs> scatters away. What? Did he just chop his arm off? Okay, Miser, that's a little much. Before my eyes, it turned into ash. <laughs> now Asmodeus is one-armed. With an invisible force, he's blown away like chaff. Before I know it, part of his leg also crumbles away. Then he loses consciousness. Okay, that's a little... I mean, the guy was creepy and rapey, but do we need to just... Okay. The strange figure is staring at me. You know who he is, Spacey. Come on. I mean, he's terrifying, but... During this time, the few remnants of the castle surround me. 
As though uh, submitting to him, they turn into ash and disappear. This is kind of sad. Like, he can't touch anything. If I had to describe the site, it was utter ruination. The end of the world. That's what is spreading around me. But I just... I'm curious about the story and what's really actually... Like, why and, you know, but... I keep still. And the young man only continues to stare at me. I like we say the young man instead of the monster. I mean, he's literally a monster, but we still love him. It's okay. He's terrifying. Absolutely terrifying, but... Young man? Huh. Why am I calling him that? Ah, cool. I like that. Right as I begin to doubt myself, the area of the strange figure's ruination approaches at the same time. I like how he doesn't say anything. He totally st I like how they just make him stand like Miser. He does Miser's poses. Like, so if you were confused, if you didn't see kind of like this figure flashing in the background and like Miser's true form, and then all of a sudden this, and you're like, huh, where's Miser? I mean, come on. If you couldn't do math, he stands exactly the same way. He shouldn't have a facial expression. It's still his strained breathing and the color deep in his eyes. The gold that looks absolutely nothing like the green of Miser's eyes. You know who he is. It's how he stands. I'm happy about your concern. If it was possible, it would be the greatest thing I could ever imagine. But, but I, I'm lying to you. Overlaps with that voice and figure. M miser? You're a miser, aren't you? At my question, the strange figure... <laughs> That's... I didn't want you to realize that. He answers me. I, I knew it! Miser! Despite changing into an unknown form, I instinctively try to approach Miser. And don't come close! With his desperate voice, I restrain myself. You can't come near me. I don't want to kill you. What do you mean? As you can see, this is my true form. And this is my true power. Magic and magic power in the end. We're only extra to him. We're only extra to him. Miser explains with a hoarse voice. And till now, at least somewhat, I managed to hold back this power. The people, objects, even the world itself. Anything near me when I'm like this, it all returns to ash. And that's my power. That sounds like a curse! So even you, if you get any closer to me, I'll turn to Ash. Like Asmodeus's arm in the vanished castle? My power shouldn't affect wormholes, though. It should be left somewhere. So, you need to return to the human world. W what about you, Miser? When I try to stop him, Rejecting me, Miser creates distance. I'll return to my world. To restrain this power, it takes some time after all. So he wasn't ever actually going to the demon world. He was going to some crazed, scary wasteland. So, huh, totally different world. After saying only this, that's why they came and he's like, oh, fake demon castle. This is never his world and the scary, ashy, ruined world that we keep seeing in our flashes and like... So... Interesting. Uh-huh. Cool. Okay, this is interesting. I see what's happening. And he, so, and that's why he has to go back. He has to go back to that. Because every single time we've seen, like, when he goes back, it looks like this, this wasteland. But yet, when they went through the fissure, and then you're in the demon, and you're like, so he's got to walk through the scary demon world. But that's why it was, you can't go to Asmodeus ever, or Bad Pockets, demon, uh, because then we would find out that he wasn't the demon king. and that's, So he was trying to be like, oh, humans can't come to my world, it would be bad. Shucks. You wouldn't want to go there, it's a shitty place. You know what I mean? Because he doesn't want you to know that it's not really where he's from. I see. Anyway. Miser takes flight, and throws himself through the fissure that the young man came through. I'm left stunned, unable to turn away until the very end. All that remained, swaying in the wind, was nothing but a wasteland of ash. Terrifying. Poor Miser, that's why he looks so sad in his thing. 
So I'm curious now, imaginary, like, see-through guy, visible guy that lives in the other, lives in the world. Are they, like, the only two in that world? Oh, I guess we're miser. See, we're now we're in. Strangely shaped arms. Strangely shaped legs. A strangely shaped body. I slowly set foot into the fissure that formed in space as though torn open. And just like traveling through the gate, moving between worlds feels like floating. I lower my foot with a tinge of unease, not knowing if there really will be ground below, then... The sensation of dry ash. Yeah, because we always keep seeing this. This is basically his world. It's just... Terrifying. And he somehow found the door... And just could change his appearance, but he can only do it for a certain period of time before he loses control. And it's just, it happened earlier than he was used to today. So, it really is this place. Beyond the fissure in space that opened for some reason during my rampage, stretching far and wide is scenery that I'm so used to seeing I'm tired of it. Even Spacey knows now. I look at my ominous palms and mutter in self-deprecation. What an ugly form. Oh, I still love him, their poor <laughs> demonic looking baby. <laughs> I like your but look, I mean Candace doesn't have a head. Rindo turned into like a sticky goo demon. Like half thing. It was a little weird. It was like muting uh slightly weird. I can handle this. And despite being used to it, I think this every time I see myself. And no matter how accustomed she is to the existence of non humans, and this strangely shaped form. And seeing the power of ruination I spread, of course she would think nothing of it. Exposed to the rough air, I slowly begin to walk. If the air in the demon world I came from is like a gloomy and stagnant swamp, and the air in this world is like an arid desert that exists to torment people, it's as though even the sad feeling I have will dry up and scatter away. I didn't think this lie would be found out. I didn't want to think it. I'm just a demon king who likes coffee. I say unsettling things once in a while, chatting with all the regulars at the shop. I watch over her while she works, enjoying the coffee she makes. And that was enough for me. I can't even do that. Spreading before my eyes are nothing but countless little hills where ash is piled up a bit more. I feel so bad for him, he just wanders around in this lonely-ass place. Oh. <laughs> This hurts. I just... And you want to be like, it's okay, it'll be like a happy ending. It's not going to be a happy ending. It's going to be terrifying. In this world, over the span of tens of thousands of years, and the countless people I cared for, and the countless graveyards of sentiment, and thousands upon thousands, far too many to count, these depressing grave markers of ash. And I'm back, everyone. That's right. In the end... This is the only place I belong. And no matter what masks I wear, and no matter what falsehoods I use to deceive, lies are always found out eventually. That's so sad. <laughs> My heart hurts so much. I still want to hope. It's okay, it'll be like a happy end. There's not going to be a happy ending, though. This is, this is where it just slides into hell, okay? After the incident where I was carried off to the demon world by the demon king called Asmodeus, <laughs> having taken refuge in the wormhole just before the demon world was reduced to waste, Candace and everyone came back to find me. Me and a captured Asmodeus were brought back to the human world. There to greet us on our conf in our confusion were Rindo and his GPM subordinates. At the time, my head was too full. I don't even remember how I explained it all to Rindo, Candace, and everyone else. For the time being, after handing over Asmodeus and arresting him under kidnapping charges, we all stayed in an, at an inn for the night. The next morning at GPM headquarters, why would we stay at an inn instead of just going back to, how far away was it? Well, let me start with the conclusion. As we thought, no connection exists between Demon World Asmodia and Demon King Miser. The words Rindo bluntly said rang especially loud in the morning silence. Yeah. There's no mistake about it. Yes, unfortunately we found evidence. 
Last night we interrogated the arrested Asmodeus as well as his surviving demon subordinates. <laughs> Jelly goo A and B. Hey, he's got both his arms back. What the fuck? Huh. Do you make me repeat myself, humans? The only Demon King reigning in Asmodeus is me. It is me alone. Demon King Asmodeus. I've never even heard the name Miser. And actually, first remove these restraints. I must go see my bride. They're like, yeah, not gonna happen, buddy. Appreciate it. Anyway, it went kind of like that. According to Rindo, Asmodeus had great luck in escaping the worst trouble. To prepare the ceremony with me, he had gathered all the demons in the planned venue out in the countryside. That ashen power of Miser seems to have stopped after destroying only half of the demon world. The place the demons had gathered happened to be in the remaining half. Thus, his subordinates and other demons avoided succumbing to that destructive power. They all managed to survive. By the way, the arm and the leg Asmodeus himself lost were reformed with magic. That explains! They're like, we just didn't want to, like, do his, like, sprite without an arm. There were no deaths in that incident. In that sense, I think from my heart that's that it's a relief. But in the end... The fake demon king was miser. He, Asmodeus, was the real one. In fact, it's possible that Miser isn't even a, isn't even a demon. And no, he's a being of unknown origin. Miser himself even admitted that Asmodeus is the real Demon King. Asmodeus, the real Demon King who rules the demon world. A high-tension man who fell for the heroine at first sight and tried to make her his bride. Yeah, crazy. That's why I can't even object to what Ill said when reconfirming the facts. But first, I... Then... Exactly what world is Miser from? I want to know that. The only way we can know that is if we ask him, and that would be the fastest. There, Ignis cuts off in an awkward way. I'm about to ask what's wrong, but I understand the meaning of that silence. Uh, I, I see. Who knows if we can even see Miser? Indeed, if Miser comes to the shop going forward, we can ask at that time. However... If he is concerned that his true form or power is now known to you, he may never come back to Enchanté again. Well, that makes me even sadder! He's just wandering around in the wasteland like I one place I was happy and I was all ruined. Sweetie, it's okay, we still love you, try to come back! Come back and we'd be like, no, you get out, you don't come back. Okay. But he comes back, oh, thank God! There's gonna be a point where he comes back and we're gonna be like, <gasps> he's gonna be like, we're gonna, oh, thank God, we were so worried about you. And he's like, Wait, what? You're like, look, you have to go back so that you don't just Understand. Yeah. Since nobody here is from the same world as him, we can't connect the gate to where he is. In that case, naturally, we have no means to go near the one known as Miser Rex. Uh, that means he's gone completely. And also, we don't want Rindo to know when he comes back, because Rindo would be like, I mean, he's extremely dangerous, and with GPM, we'd, I'd have to fucking kill him. I mean, because he could, like, destroy everything. Legit! Rindo, don't piss him off. So what you're saying is, Miser, if I date you and then, like, we break up, you're going to destroy the world because you're going to go fucking angsty and crazy? Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> Miser wouldn't do that. <laughs> but I'm just saying, there are some people who this would be dangerous. I never even imagined that possibility since he'd been coming to Enchanté every day until now. I know it's so sad they're showing it. You're like, I, but I miss his beautiful face. If the demon world and his position he spoke of was all a ruse, I... we... we've never had a single connection to him or his world. Right from the beginning. <laughs> hey, don't think of it that way. He was telling... he didn't... he lied to you about his position and the world he came from, but he didn't lie to you about who he was. I... in the sense of actual personality. Like, I love coffee, and this is this, and I love... it was the... Yeah, I'm the Demon King from Asmodee. I didn't want to tell you. I'm actually a monster from a world, and if I don't go back, I'm going to turn everything to ash. So most people don't want to hang around me because I'm like literally walking death. Like, I will kill you. But like in this form, I'm totally fine. Like, I mean, I kind of understand why you lied. You just, oh, yeah, I'm a Demon King. I got some magic power, but like, it's cool. I can chill out and hang out and have fun. I mean, the person he is, the coffee-loving per- like, you know, he just lied about his job, basically, and where he came from. So. Uh, 
<laughs> I'm sorry, because this might feel like kicking you while you're down, but... Makano meekly raises a hand. Don't you dare make fun of my love, okay? When Miser turned into that strange form, it wasn't just the demon world. The entire human world also had intense earthquakes at the same time. The entire human world? Really? Could that be... Like when the fissure opened up in front of Enchanté. Like the shaking of the world itself. Yes, fortunately there was no great disaster like in the demon world, but... And since then, frequency of wormholes occurring has greatly increased. So like, fucking... What kind of... He has so much power, he can destroy all the worlds? Just... That's... Dangerous. Considering the timing, I doubt it's unrelated. We need to be prepared for unexpected events for a while. Like, he's creating all these weird holes. I'm sorry for saying it in a way, suspecting Miser. Subduing his usual eccentricity, Mikado apologized to me, and I couldn't complain. We all quietly leave the GPM. This is so sad, I don't like it. Getting into a car procured for us by Rindo, I absentmindedly stare out at the city road. It still has no sense of reality. In reality! Like, in the real kind of world, best case scenario, he would never come back. He would just stay in his world to not fuck up everything, and we would just pine alone for a while and then move on. I, but you don't want that. This isn't a Tome game. This is not how it's supposed to work. We're supposed to be able to keep my love interest. Don't you take him away from me. Almost everything he said was painted over with falsehoods, but this game is so full of, like, oh, like, Rindo's red. Oh, I don't like this. I think Ill's route actually surprisingly was the only one that ended. I mean, Candace's route didn't end badly. We destroyed the fairy world. But I mean, the tree was evil, so like, bye, bitch. I don't feel bad about that, you know? I feel bad about what Ignis went through, but in the end, it was still a happy ending. Like, it's not like, well, this is my boyfriend. He's a big, giant dog on fire. You know what I mean? He's still himself, so... But Rindo's is really the only one that leaves a bad taste in your mouth. You're like, sure, it's a happy ending, but he's a subhuman, and then Mikado... And I don't know, I just didn't really particularly... That one just... I didn't like that ending. It's a happy ending, but it's not. It's like, I don't... Okay, I guess. And I just expected them to kind of go downhill, but Ill's ending really actually kind of... It wasn't like, well, someday he'll remember. He remembered a snap at the end, and you're like, alright. That little bit gave me hope, but this... I just... This game's gonna rip it away from me. I just don't like where this is going. Look, I've just been angsty and anxious about this. Like, this is gonna be like Rindo's route, and I'm gonna be like, no, fuck you, no. It will never be as bad as Toa's route in Seven Sc It will never be as bad as the true route in Seven. Fuck that game. I'm still angry about it. Okay. Anyway, almost everything he said was painted over with falsehoods. His liking coffee. No, he likes coffee. His being the strongest demon king from the demon world who likes teasing people. Uh, okay, well, I mean, the strongest demon king from the demon world part, yes. The form of that person who I looked at and talked with, like, normal until now. The form, yes. True. Miser X, three. His self-proclaimed status as a demon king, or even being a demon, was all a lie. His true identity is that he's a man of much mystery who took on an abnormal form and wields the power to turn his surroundings into ash. He's literally the destroyer of everything. It now seems far away and uncertain. The thing is, is like, she's like, that he likes coffee. He could still like coffee just because he's the, the, the destroyer of all. Simmer down, girl. After getting home, maybe Miser will have come back with that usual nonchalant look on his face. He's not coming back for a while. Such positive thinking by us all was in vain. As expected, no sight of Miser at the shop. After returning to Enchanté, I didn't feel like doing anything at all, and when the evening came, I went right to sleep. This hurts. Why would you break me like this, Miser? Then, the next morning, what woke me up was what seemed like a small shaking on my shoulder. Another earthquake? Kororo also woke up in surprise, snuggling up against me and trembling. I hold Kororo, protecting it, and wait for the shaking to settle. A few minutes later, the shaking stopped. The sad thing is, is he's in his world. He hasn't come back. 
The scale was small, but it's after that incident happened. According to Mikado, the earthquakes and wormholes occurring in various places aren't unrelated. I can't help but put myself on guard. Wormholes, huh? It's like, it's alright if I get sucked into a wormhole, I guess it's fine. And everyone's like, Spacey, are you okay? No. The shape is strange, so fissures in space... We were calling them something like that, but... But the fissure that opened in the demon world was also just another kind of wormhole. So beyond them, there should be another world. I wonder what world Miser returned to through there. It's been one night since then, but I wonder if he'll come to the shop today. It's going to be a long time, I'm going to guess. It's going to be like weeks. I'm also curious if anything broke during that earthquake just now. His cup. Oh! <laughs> to be ready to make coffee whenever Miser comes back. Yeah, I'll run the shop like normal today. Look, like she's trying to be all hopeful. And sometimes you do that. Like, that's the most, like... Like, there's those swings. You have that, like, I don't know what it is, like, me when I'm in that, like, sad, depressed state. It's not like, I'm just gonna lay in bed. It's like, no, I gotta get up. I gotta get up. I gotta do the same old thing I always do. And it makes you more depressed because you're, like, just going through the motions. Get up. Get dressed. Go to work. I exist. And you just... And everyone just thinks you're fine because you're not curled up in a ball in a corner. But you just wish you could. You're like, no... I have to still do the normal things I always do. But you're like disconnected from it. You're like, I'll just go about my life like normal. And everyone's like, are you okay? And you're like, yeah, totally fine. <laughs> but you're not fine. Not at all. To make preparations, I changed my clothes and head downstairs. Huh? They're alone. Sitting in the chair closest to the room with the gate, I find Il. Il? What's wrong? When I call out to him, Il slowly raises his head. He's he sad too. I was waiting here for Miser to come to the shop. Oh, Il and I have to hold each other and cry now. I wanted to let you know the moment he came. He speaks softly to me, and in front of him is a game console with an Atome game set inside. I hope you're not playing Cafe Enchante, because it's, it's a train wreck of emotions. He isn't playing it. He just sits there with it on the table. I don't feel much like love. I feel like this is going to be a bad ending. You and me both, Il. How long could he have been waiting here for Miser to come? Three weeks later, Il's still sitting there. Sweetie, you need to take a shower. Il, it's still early in the morning. I think Miser usually comes a while later. So how about I bring something to drink out and we can drink it together while wait, while waiting. Like, it looks so sad. His face was like, I'm gonna cry. Il nods in silence and seems somewhat sad. I feel like I feel like she's trying to put on a brave front and be like, it's okay, we'll be okay. And Il is like, we're not gonna be okay. <laughs> the two of them are literally ever. You're like, I'm trying to put on a brave front. This is gonna be fine. It's sad now. It'll get better. And inside you're like, Il, it's never gonna get better. Oh, God. Uh, okay. Oh. Afterwards, I had an espresso. Il drank a coffee float. While the two of us quiet... While the two of us quietly... <laughs> While the two of us sat quietly, waiting to hear the sound of the gate. However, uh, even long after the time he usually comes to visit... There was no cheerful doorbell sound announcing the Demon King's visit. It's sad because he probably thinks you saw my real form and you don't want me there and blah, blah, blah. And once everything settles in and he's having a pity party in the crap world. I mean, his world is sad, so I can't blame him. And we're having a pity party like, but he won't come back. Why doesn't he love us? And he's like, they don't want me back. They don't love me. Oh, can't even text him. The more time passes, the gloomier me and Ill's expressions become. I don't know. This part's so bad. Ill, that Atome game, you're not gonna play? I ask a question to change the mood, but Ill shakes his head. It is. I didn't bring it to play it. I brought it to show Miser. Miser? It's just this morning. A memory. I saw a dream and remembered. And this Atome game is a remake of the one Miser bought for me around when we first met. 
And we know which one that is. I don't clearly remember the time, but when he comes, I wanted to show him and talk about old memories. Ill's what's gonna break me. Not us being sad that our boyfriend isn't coming back. It's fucking Ill being sad that our boyfriend's not coming back. What the hell? <laughs> he makes me hurt more. Ill, stop. Everyone else will be like, yeah, we're sad, but we'll be uplifting and support you. And Ill's over there in a fucking puddle in the corner. And you're like, see, that's why I can't have nice things. <laughs> like, Ill makes me hurt so much more. I see. Ill, you must get along especially well with Miser. I often see you two together. Yes, from the first mo time we met, he told me, I just can't leave you be and has been concerned about me ever since. Like, he's such a good destroyer of worlds. <laughs> I kind of get it. Miser is... He feels kind of like your older brother. He's usually carefree about everything, but he seems to like to care for people or talk to them with no discrimination. Does he really? All no discrimination? Huh? When Ill spills these words, my hand freezes as I was about to drink my espresso. No, I didn't mean that in a negative way. I simply couldn't find a more appropriate way to express it. The smile that Miser only gives to you alone. Among all the knowledge I possess, it seems the most kind and beautiful. That's how I perceive it. You know, yeah, because he likes all you, but he loves me. Like, he loves you, but he loves me, you know what I'm saying? I, and Enchante, oh, watching the sight of you two, I like that more than anything. Okay, now you're... Why? Why is Ill the person that has to drag you? You're like, we can try to be happy. And then Ill's like, I just want to suck you down into my pit of misery. Feel bad. <laughs> he hurts my soul so much. He's so adorable and he's just hurting me so much with this. The way he looks at you is so wonderful, but we'll never have that again. Ill is not the person you want around you when somebody dies. Because he's like, we'll never have them around us again. And they're reminding you're like, you're supposed to remind me of the happy times, but you're making me feel sad about the shit that's never going to exist again. <laughs> like, I know Miser's going to come back at some point, but it was just making you feel like, we're this is it. We're just six more chapters of nothing. Is, is that so? With what kind of feeling? I don't know what ill means by this special kind of smile. But if I had to guess... It must be because I'm the owner of this place. And also... No, it's because he loves us. I mean, look at the way he looked at us when he first busted through. Oh! I thought it would never happen again. Really, really, to think such a day would come. When I was little, maybe he's being nice because we met before. He was like, no, goddammit, idiot. <laughs> Il's like, I played 7,000 Otome games. The moment I say this, Il raises his head with a questioning look. In your childhood, he'd met you? You met Miser? Huh? Um, yeah. Did we, though? We met Canis. You know, you were still so small. You wouldn't remember, huh? Hmm, wait, did I meet you at some point in the past, Miser? It was such a short meeting, after all. It isn't surprising that you don't remember. I think Miser said something like that. In another life? Oh, in another life. And that's a clearly an inconsistency, isn't it? An inconsistency? Il nods and starts explaining while looking towards the gate with a troubled expression. Hmm. Explain to me, Il. According to Il, the order that the regular customers of Enchanté first came to the shop is... First, the longest surviving member, or the longest serving member, Canis. Followed by Il. Then Miser. After a long gap of time, shortly before the collision with the GPM, it seems Ignis came into the shop. However... Until my dream this morning, I perceived the order in which Miser and I came to the shop as the reverse. Il also mentions it's likely the same as Canis, who isn't present right now. Wait, the reverse? In other words, Miser first came to the shop after Il. That's the correct order. Il first came to the shop after Miser. That's what he believes. That's what he believed. How could you have that misunderstanding? That's because, saying this, Il continues his story with mixed feelings. 
feelings. But it sounds like I said feelings. According to what he remembered this morning, in reality, for a while after coming to the shop, he'd been unwell under the effect of the air in this world. He wasn't used to it. Also, we... Okay, that's what... I'm unwell because... No, it's because you broke your programming and you just don't remember... Which... We're supposed to not know the shit about ill, but okay. Grandpa was looking after him and he was asleep in an empty room. Then, Miser made his first visit around that time. After Ill's condition improved, they were introduced, it seems. Candace was absent at the time, and he had forgotten most of his memories during his time asleep. Seeing how accustomed Miser was to being at Enchanté by then, he was mistaken as the senior who came to the shop first. In other words, the reverse order. Until now, he himself and those around had believed that. So that's how it happened. But why do you sense that as an as an inconsistency? At around the same time I came to the shop, his granddaughter, you, left on Shantae. And that's what Soan told me. So then if Miser first came after me, but also said that he met you before, that's what he stated, correct? He met us in another life. It has to be another fucking life. Oh my god. Huh. When he puts it that way... There does seem to be a huge disconnect. And we've only ever seen that we talked to Canis once when we were little. After that, I didn't visit Grandpa's shop even once. What could this mean? I have no certainty or bi a basis for this. But between you and Miser, something I don't know. There could be some other point of contact between you. We won't know that unless Miser comes back. Mill's words ended up being in vain. Even past closing time, Miser didn't come to the shop. It's going to be weeks before he comes back, I guarantee you. Miser had come to Enchanté every single day before. He didn't visit the day after or the next. I still can't believe this is real. I end up spacing out. No matter what I think about, all that comes up in my head is the rear view of Miser as he left me. When will he get to the shop? More importantly, will he ever come at all? This is all I think about. I can't help but feel distracted, and I can't do my work properly. For now, I should rest my body and mind. I decide to close business for today. You're like, everybody else can manage their own fucking shit, you know what I mean? However, I can't calm down if I'm not doing anything. In the end, I descend down to the shop to try and clean in the name of rest. You're gone, and then he comes. The one day he actually kind of sneaks in, and like no one's there, and he's like, oh. To vent the place out, I approach the window. It's happy music. I hear what seems to be talking from the room at the gate. I get curious, and when I peek inside, it'd be so much funny if it was Miser. You're like, peek in there, and you're like, oh, it's you guys. And they're like, don't sound so disappointed. Ignis and Canis are looking at the gate with serious faces. Naturally, as long as no customers visit, the gate doorbell wouldn't ring. Ignis? Canis? When I call to them, the two turn around. Hey, what's up? I could be asking you the same thing right now. What are you two doing? Going back to your worlds? Doesn't seem like it. Indeed, there was just something we wished to test with the gate. Test? It's a brute force by numbers strategy. We're going to try opening a gate over and over and over again. And then maybe it would end up connecting to where Miser's at. What? Maybe it would end up connecting to Miser's world. The gate connection should be limiting, limited to the world the person who opens it is from. They've used it over and over now. They should know that better than anyone. What if I open it? We're in the world that I come from. If I open the door, is it literally just the other side? Like, we walked around the door, and you're like, there's nothing but the back of the door. So if we open the door, and it'd be like, it's just opening the door and walking through to the other side of the room. Where would it go? Is there another gate in another place in this world that I would open, and I could be like, cool, I'm walking in. Hey, what's up? Now I'm in a coffee shop in America? I'm in like the back of a fucking Starbucks or some shit? Can we open? I want to know where it goes. If we open it, we should be able to go to the human world. We're in the human world, but we should also open a gate to another part of the human... I'm just saying. <laughs> like, 
That's how you make friends. You just open gates in your house, magical portals from your back room in a coffee shop to someone else's back room in like a... Maybe they have like a bakery or some shit. Be like, sweet! You've got co I got coffee, you got... Oh my god! Like, I'm just saying. Commerce. <laughs> now I need to know what happens. Anyway. But the possibility is not zero. In the first place, this gate is a relic that we do not fully understand. There was the accident before with you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that was magical dude that we don't know his name. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Tens or hundreds of times. If we keep opening, it could connect to his world by chance, right? Well, that was the idea. We were considering things that we could possibly try. What if you both held hands and then opened the door? What world would open open to? Because you're both... I guess it's whoever's hand is on the knob, but what if you both touched one side of the knob and then you opened it together? So both of you were touching it. Whose world would open? <laughs> I'm just saying. I need, to, I need answers to these questions. For research purposes. That's right. Instead of doing nothing, that's far more constructive. Instead of moping around and crying in a corner. And it was like, I resent that. <laughs> Thanks, you two. <laughs> I believe it is a little early to thank us before we have succeeded. Yeah, but you're trying. Pats him on imaginary head. All right, let's go for round one. If this one's no good, you do the next one. Tuh! Maybe to put some life into it, Ignis unleashes a sharp kick to the gate to forcefully open it. Hey, I'm here for a visit, and I have some business with bro. Gah! The perfect timing, Dromi comes to visit the shop, and it lands cleanly in his gut. Good. And Ignis is like, well, I mean, that was perfect. I could not have timed that fucking better. He slammed into the door, slumps over, and goes unconscious, foaming at the mouth. That's beautiful, and I appreciate it. As though trying to land a finishing blow. Excuse me. I hear our headless knight is staying here. <laughs> hmm? On his first visit to Enchante, the surprising guest from the fairy world puts a forceful puts a forceful step onto his body. Did he just step on <laughs> I love how when this one drove he's like everybody's fucking doormat and I love it. Yeah, I thought everything inside my body would come flying out of my mouth. S sorry about that. This time he had no fault. It was just an unfortunate accident. Even Ignis, the one who unleashed the impressive kick, gave an honest apology to Dromi. Although if I had to say, the more surprising one is the other guest. <laughs> We're all staring at Venia like, what are you doing here? I mean, I'm not complaining. I did forget about... You know why he showed up? He was like, bitch. He's like... First of all, you said Solitus could steal your heart? Hello? I know! I'm sorry! I forgot about you! I absolutely forgot about you, Venia. It's not to do because you shoved me in a tree that was going to try to kill me. It's it's not because of that. I forgave you for that. Not quite over it, but like, you know. So, what exactly is the meaning of this, Venia? And true, I told you the location of the gate. However, for you to leave the Fairy Queen and come to Enchanté, and between us... I didn't leave her highness's side because I wanted to. Venia gives Canis a stern look. As of a few days ago, there's been a major anomaly related to the wormholes in Medeo. And to report that and to encourage you to deal with it, I took the trouble of coming here myself. An anomaly? We're like, <laughs> No idea what caused it! Don't blame Miser, they're all trying to kill him. Oh, a few days ago? Could that be what the fairies, fairy there's talking about? Still holding his stomach, Dromi raises his head and speaks to Venia, someone he's just meeting for the first time. He's like, oh, like, that thing. Really scary, weird fissures in space that totally erase the area they appear in? Wait, fissures? He, yes, and that's exactly correct, but how did you know? Well, that's because, since last night, we've been having the same fissures popping up in Beastia like crazy. And yet, you have not gotten stuck in one! At the story... At, at the story established between the two, Canis and Ignis stand up from their seats. 
Fissures in space, you say? Like the one that opened in the demon world? Hey, Jerome! The hell is this about? You better tell me every little detail! Ugh, bro! Don't shake my body like that! That's what I came here for! It seems... I must also speak with him about this, and it would be best to share information. According to the two, around the time Canis and Ignis stopped returning to their worlds to guard me, in each world, small-scale wormholes started to occur more than usual. However, if that was all, they just needed to not get sucked in. A simple coincidence. It could be settled with a short line like that. But last night, everything changed. Huh, but, like, Miser's in his world, so this is interesting. According to Dromi, who had a grasp of time in the human world and his testimony... Uh, ah! Okay, here's the problem. At the same time that Miser took that form in the demon world, destroyed it, and space was torn in the sky, an earthquake occurred, like the human world. But last night, everything changed. But that wasn't last night. It was like three or four nights ago. So uh, this is the only thing that drives me crazy sometimes in games. Like the other night, yesterday. So remember the other day? It literally happened yesterday in game. And they say the other day. That's not the other day. That's yesterday. That drives me crazy. I don't know why. It's a weird thing. But this. So last night. Last night literally means last night. But this has been at least three nights. Because we said... The next day we showed up and he didn't come. He didn't come the next day or the day after. That's several nights difference, not last night. It's nowhere near fucking last night. If they said the other night, I don't know if that's a shitty translation or it's just bad writing where they don't have their own timeline right. But anyway, several nights ago, anyway, an earthquake occurred like the human world. Okay. But it was even worse. In both Medeo and Bestia, the normal seeming wormholes changed into giant fissures in space. As though sucking it in, everything around where they occurred was annihilated. I mean, that's definitely because of Miser, but... Those fissures in other worlds, too. And unlike the time at Amasaki Island, they annihilated their surroundings. Because he lost control. Hmm. I heard the rumors and went to see the former site of Minotaur territory vanished completely. It even gave me chills. Oh, it even gave me chills. Dromi says this and holds his own shoulders. Oh, he was saying that. So, okay, never mind. It just... Since time prior in Medeo, when they did become fissures, signs of this began to occur. Since time prior in Medeo, while they did not become fissures, signs of this began to occur. What kind of weird-ass riddles are you talking? Anyway. As I conducted investigations into it, I saw the moment of a fissure occurring with my own eyes. And the fissure that occurred annihilated the, an edge of Yggdrasil. And normally the world tree has a frightening level of vitality and regeneration power. But inexplicably, as though the ground out section had succumbed to necrosis, it didn't regrow. But here's the weird thing. That happened prior to this event. That So it's weird the time in this. I mean, although maybe that's what he's trying to say. Oh, sometime prior in Medeo. Like, so maybe time in Medeo is different, but but you know what I mean? Because that scene happened where they were like, oh my god, the tree is a gaping hole, is missing, and now all of a sudden it's... I don't know. Anyway. After hearing the two's testimonies, we all look at each other in the face. H hey, Venia, about the fissure in space you saw... Did anything around or inside it leave an impression? Or did anything look strange? Something that left an impression. Oh, let's see. And now that you mention it, if I recall, what appeared to be white sand fluttered around the area for a moment. White sand. Like ash? Exactly. Th that's... Are you sure it wasn't ash? Ah, uh, true. It could have been that. It sounds as though, as Spacey said before, what accompanied Miser's strange form. A close resemblance to his ability to turn his surroundings to ash. Then... Miser's sad and his sadness is like destroying worlds. I'll return to my world. And to restrain this power, it takes some time after all. Ash. 
everything beyond those fissures... Could that be in the world Miser's in? The probability is high. However you want to slice it, it's just not a coincidence. I thought this was only happening in the human world, but... I mean, they specifically said it was happening everywhere, but okay. In three worlds now, and excluding every world out there, what exactly is occurring? Uh, bro? When Ignis starts pondering, Dromi hangs his little head. His hangs his head a little while. I don't know why I read that backwards. I know everything everything going on here is pretty serious, but, uh... You think you could come back with me? You know, just for a while? It's because of those fissures? Beastie's kind of in a bit of a panic right now on account of them? Enough to make killing each other a secondary issue. Dromi speaks of the confusion over there. So I want you to do what it takes to calm the demon beast down, even if it's a little physical persuasion. As though jumping on this opportunity, Venia also speaks to Canis, or more like throws instructions at him. Canis, he must return to Medeo as well. We have perceived the occurrence of these fissures as a great threat. While we have yet to decide on exact methods to deal with them, your original duty is to defend Medeo. Would you like to fulfill that duty now? Or we would like you to defend that duty now, right? We would like you. I was like, would you like to do this? I'm like, never mind. The two of them look at me in silence and hesitate a moment. You're fine. I take a guess at the meaning of their gazes. I'll be okay. While I'm sure you two are really worried about Miser too, I'm sure he'd be mad if he knew you ignored the dangers in your homelands. Shh, I'm sure. Damn it. So annoying. Just one problem after the next. Literally my fucking life, Ignis. However, we should accept her offer in this case. Also, even if we return to our own worlds, and this does not mean we abandon Miser. Right, and actually going back might help us make some progress. If fissures are happening all over, over there, we might be able to see him. We can even check what's inside him. Thanks, but don't do anything dangerous. The two nod firmly at the same time. <laughs> Alright, perfect timing. So, we're going to wrap this part up here while they are going afterwards... They're going to go. We're going to stop here and we'll see what happens in the next part. So I will see you guys next time. Remember to give the video a big thumbs up and subscribe to see more.